Hey there folks, so yeah, I filmed this video back to back with the Return to Horror Tell video. Anyway, welcome to the wonderful world of dodgy movies and TV. I am your host, movie and TV mistress, and yes, I'm not wearing my wig. Because it's too hot here in Blackpool. Hence the fan. And oh my god, this feels so good. So, the other week I reviewed a film which was like five minutes ago. <laughs> I reviewed a film called Return to Horror Hotel. Well, as I mentioned, it was technically a sequel to Horror Hotel from 2016. Sometimes a comatose patient will regain consciousness for a short while, only to relapse into a vegetative condition once again. However, this patient will never regain consciousness. <laughs> Horror Hotel. It has multiple stories, more than four. You know when you, you're trying to do something and your phone decides to go, nah, it's too hot. That's what's going on. Everything is going a bit haywire. So I'm expecting my camera to go haywire or this light one of the two. So at the minute I'm just gonna keep myself cool. But while I'm doing this and waiting for this to load, let's see if I can remember all of the stories. Okay, so story number one. Um, story number one, <laughs> funny title here, is called Aliens Stole My Boyfriend. Yeah, aliens. So turns out this guy is being dumped by his girlfriend at the start and as he's being dumped two 60s looking chicks you know blonde hair full on 60s miniskirt type outfit very 60s outfits and dancing like you know the 60s way yeah they just randomly appear beside them and go oh our, car, our um, space buggy is about to crash and we got transported here just before it because that's a safety mechanism of space buggies in the in space i guess and it crashes on the girl who's dumping the bloke's car and then hilarity ensues and no one has a problem with the fact that these are aliens at any point they just are very the woman is very angry that their space buggy has crashed onto her car <laughs> so she calls her loan shark el shreko who owns the deed to said car uh, to come round. In the meantime, the 60s chick aliens, because of light speed, they, they do explain it. Um, so, you know, it takes a certain amount of time for light to reach a certain area. It also does that with, with radio waves and TV waves and stuff. So it's taken like, what, 40 odd, 50 years since um, the, the broadcasts of American 60s television to get to their alien planet 
So they're all very much into the 60s and saying, oh my God, that is so, whatever, I don't know. I'm not very good at 60s dialogue. But anyway, they start hitting on the bloke. The bloke loves the fact that these two aliens are hitting on her, hitting him, and he's just been dumped. But the girl is like, no, he's still my boyfriend. And he's like, but you just dumped me. Hilarity ensues, and then apparently the pill can poison them, because the girlfriend, ex slash ex-girlfriend, poisons one of them with um, an overdose of the pill. Yeah. And then, as I've said in Return to Horror Hotel, they're very much kind of Tales from the Crypt or Twilight Zone-esque stories, so the story starts and ends in the same way. That's all I'll say. But it has a comeuppance for certain characters um, along the way. The next story, uh, let me remember here. See, I didn't know what to expect when I went into watching this one, I have to say, um, because when I went into seeing this, I was like, okay, so it's called Horror Hotel. I know it's an anthology movie because it's told me that in the description, but um, I was expecting horror. But I will tell you now that the first one is more sci-fi, but it doesn't have the same ring as, you know, sci-fi hotel doesn't have the same ring as horror hotel. Um, the next story is quite disturbing. Um, and I, I wasn't sure what to make of it when I saw it. Because I don't think you are meant to be sure what to make of it at the start. And at the end you're still kind of going, ew, in all ew. So, uh, it's called Coma Girl. It's kind of, do you remember if you've ever seen Kill Bill? Uma Thurman's character was in a coma and people were doing stuff to her. Yeah, that's all I'll say. The guy pays a chance to take the, the, the Coma Girl to the hotel, slash motel, motor court, whatever you want to call it. And well, apparently it's their anniversary, they're married according to this guy. I'm thinking, no, this is just weird. And then Jack the turns up and goes, no, no, she's got, she's pregnant with my baby. What? This story is very disturbing and uh, feels like it could also happen. That's the weird thing, but great ending unexpected brilliant twist and um recommend you see that one because it's hilarious uh, the first one's just pure comedy in my opinion the second one they're all very funny more funny than return to horror tell horror tell return to horror tell is a bit more serious it has comedy elements but i feel like some of the stories are a bit more serious especially um no time for love was very serious uh, and very sweet. Um, the next story, um, Brain Robbers in Love. So this old lady and her bodyguard have got hold of a brain transferring device from a scientist as well as a spray that will instantly kill you if you spray it on yourself or spray it on somebody, right? Um, and the old lady is like a CEO or something or, or a head of a company and she wants to steal secrets from another company and there's this woman who's down and out who works for that company who's willing to do this brain swap so they do a brain swap hilarity ensues and people die and oh wouldn't you know it there's a twist like I said last week I don't want to spoil the endings I think people should watch this film because it's just bizarre I think this is, in, in, in regards to some of the stories, is slightly better than Holidays. There's about maybe two, three stories out of Holidays that I actually went, those are awesome and I'd like them to be expanded upon. Um, so after the brain rubbers in love and the twisted ending that happens in that, which is very funny, we have the problem with clones. Now I think this is one of my favourites because um <laughs> right so we've got an actress 
Now, when I saw her name in the credits list, and she is in, the, in Return to Horror Hotel, she's in the first story. Um, her name is Baby Norman. I misread it as Barry Norman and went, oh, right, cool. There's an, so an actor called Barry Norman, like the same as the critic. No, no, it was Baby Norman. Yes, her name is Baby, and that's the only other person I've ever heard called Baby was, well, Baby in Dirty Dancing. So I'm assuming if that is her real name, that she's probably pissed off with people constantly saying nobody puts baby in a corner. And there is a possibility that she could be an adult film star just by looking at her. She's, she's that, honestly, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous and she knows how to use her body. And she's, she's in a few of these stories. Um, there's a lot more of the actresses or actors appearing in multiple stories. So they're not playing the same characters there's no link between them um, so each story is individual so in the problem of clones she plays um, a mum who is elderly who has like five or six clones of her and there is what is called the skip tracer now the skip tracer is played by the same guy who played the bodybuilder in return to horror hotel that like just collect his sweat in bed bugs and um, he's after a specific clone but he doesn't know they're clones and he needs to find that one because basically they've skipped there so bounty hunter skip traders whatever you want to call it that's what he's doing he's trying to find the right clone so in this way it gives you a chance to see the scale and the ability of baby Norman because she has to play multiple different characters who are completely different in the way they dress, the way they talk, etc. Um, and she does a great job. And then she's also got a great job in the final story of the film, but I'll get to that in a moment. So the next story after the problem with clones is Four Eyes. So it involves a paraplegic hitman and he's encouraged by a friend to kill his friend's girlfriend and because he wants him to kill well his ex-wife not a girlfriend and he is not sure how to do it but he's a hitman but he doesn't know how to do it so he's asking and you can kind of see where it's heading when you're watching it you're like going oh my god this is and it's it's a good twist but I, I have to say I personally saw it coming because it was like I know where this is going that guy's saying he doesn't know how to do it but he's going to kill that guy whoops sorry spoiler anyway so that was uh, a weird one so the final story I'm sure there was one more but I think this is the final one The final one is Life After Men. So it's set in a post-apocalyptic future. One of the... So it's kind of like a... So there's no men. It's only women. Um, men have become extinct. But if there are any men, they are hunted down by this totalitarian like police force. One of them being Baby Norman. Another one being one of the aliens from... Um, the alien stole my boyfriend story and then there's these two girls who've run away and this is what I love right indie films and filmmakers in general when they're trying to do something on a budget will do do weird things with props so what do we have in the future of course we're gonna have our phones attached to our wrists which we already do but um, yeah, it's not like a smart watch. It's a Blackberry attached to a watch. <laughs> hey, I liked it. It made me laugh because it was like, hey, that's a Blackberry attached to your wrist. But anyway, so apparently the server can tell where everyone is at any one time. And these two girls don't want to be part of that and they want to get away. So they're they're using the fact that the server is down because there's a thunderstorm to hide for a bit and there's a lesbian storyline going on there that 
is kind of hinted at but doesn't go anywhere but whatever so basically yeah everyone's a lesbian in the future okay but there are still men around somewhere and it's up to baby norman and the one of the aliens um from the first story <laughs> to track them down in their very nazi looking uniforms that you know belongs in like you know one of those ss movies you know ilsa type movies seriously baby norman looks like she she could play a really good kick-ass ilsa it's a weird story i'm not quite sure about it it would be an interesting tale to go a bit deeper into kind of like you know um hands made tell you know sometimes you need to expand on it uh i felt kind of a bit disappointed by the end of it because it just seemed baby norman knew what was going on and understood who'd done what and I, I just wasn't I, I just wasn't chuffed with the ending. It was a good story, but like Stephen King sometimes, the ending was a bit of a letdown. But apart from that, so as I said, this film is more sci-fi than horror. The second one is a bit gross in the first story and a bit more thrilling, a bit more creepy. There's a bit more of an ease with the second story. Sorry, second film. Um, but I would recommend that you also do check out this one because it is funny and I really enjoyed it. And I'm not saying that because um, a producer contacted me and went, hey, do you want to check out Return to Horror Tale? Um, she didn't ask me to watch this one. I watched this one on my own, off my own bat and went, all right, let's see what their other work's like. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised by what the, the effort they put in. Yes, it's not, it's nowhere in the same scale as Holidays or um, Wild Tales. You know, visually, you can tell it's a lower budget film, but that doesn't mean it's not good worth while watch. It is worth while watch. And like I've said, I will watch just about anything because I like movies and I like to find out what is out there and sometimes yes some of these movies you sort of go why was that even made and sometimes you go do you know what good on them for giving it a go so check this out and check out return to horror tale and next week i will be back with a review of i don't know something possibly killing hasselhoff mom and dad who knows i've got so many films to watch that um it could be anything again if you have any suggestions for me to review do like debbie hester just send me a message either comment on my uh, down below on the videos or uh, send me a message on facebook twitter instagram or even on my website just let me know what you're thinking and any suggestions are greatly appreciated and I'll watch anything like I said so but remember what I always say folks there is a lot of dodgy films out there and so much for me to watch so hit the subscribe button over there when it pops up comment down below and when you hit the subscribe buttons over there don't forget to hit the notification bell because like I said before that will notify you when I upload because hitting subscribe doesn't let you know when I upload unfortunately and I will be back next week with another review bye